So one scene that I, um, so I mentioned that this book pulls you right into the action and it drops you right in the middle of 1940 London. One scene in particular that stands out to me is when Maggie and her friend John are coming home from an event in the dark. They've just left a pub and then they have to go back into the pub after hours and hide in the basement because there is an air raid that comes along. And then we'll pause. And everyone's huddled under the under the blah, blah. <laughs> and everyone's huddled in the basement of the bar just trying to survive this first attack on London in September of 1940 in the basement of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was real. <laughs> Go for it. This is it. Shake it. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Shake it, not stirred. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Books and Looks. Today, we have a familiar face that has been on the show before, Cherie. Cherie, you can reintroduce yourself, and you can tell our audience a little bit about what you will be reviewing. And we are doing a special theme this month, so you can tell them a little bit about that while I get you started. Thank you. So. I'm Cherie Morgan. I've been a librarian here in Baytown for almost 20 years. I'm just one of the regular librarians you'll see me out at the desk. And I wanted to talk about this book today. This is Mr. Churchill's Secretary by Susan Elia McNeil. This book is set in 1940. And with that as the inspiration, we're going to do a vintage 1940 look. And let me just be clear. I um, looked into a lot of 1940s makeup very natural so these steps might i'm going to try to reflect the same steps as maybe uh, what a 1940s makeup would look so it's not as glamorous as you know the modern day process but it's still really fun so mr churchill's secretary tell us a little bit about this book and your thoughts this book is a mystery it's set in 1940 in london and it is Spoilers, the first of a series. This is the first book to introduce Maggie Hope. It is a mystery series with espionage as a, a big focus throughout the series. Uh, your protagonist is Margaret Hope, Maggie Hope. She is British by birth, but American raised. She grew up with her aunt, who is a professor at Wellesley College. Maggie graduated from Wellesley and was accepted to a PhD program in mathematics I should remember the university, but I don't. It was MIT or one of the really big ones. And as she was getting ready to start her PhD program, Maggie's grandmother in London passed away. Now, this was really a shock to Maggie on a number of points. Point one being she had no idea that any relative of hers was still living other than Aunt Edith. So this was a grandmother Maggie had never met because when she was a tiny baby, both of her parents passed away in a car accident and Aunt Edith moved to America with Maggie, and she grew up there completely lacking knowledge of her father's family or her mother's. Okay. Now, you notice this is called Mr. Churchill's secretary, and this is during wartime in England. How did Maggie get from uh, the United States over to England? Her grandmother's will. Maggie's grandmother required that Maggie, as her heir, oversee the sale of the grandmother's home if Maggie chose to sell it. So this required Maggie to go to England the circa 1938, get the house ready to sell, sell it, and then presumably defer her enrollment and come back to pursue her PhD in mathematics. This also was a shock to Maggie because the only reason she found out about this will and her grandmother at all was because of that provision that required Maggie to oversee the sale in person. It was 1938 in London. This was not a good time to try to sell a house, so it didn't sell. And Maggie has been in London ever since. As the war began, um, Maggie felt obligated to contribute to the war effort and to stay in London rather than chucking it all and going back to the United States with Aunt Edith. So normally in the 40s, um, 
they would actually use um, what was like a cake foundation, which is basically just a powder foundation. I'm using liquid right now because it's usually um, what I like to use in order to even out the complexion. But if we were being um, a little more original with the 1940s look, we would stick to um, just powder makeup in a compact. It would come something like this. Um, and it usually would have some form of little applicator or sponge to apply it. Sometimes people even applied it with their hands. They would just kind of get in there and then just do exactly this. And another little 1940s makeup fact before we jump back into the book. Um, with their eyebrows, they also kept it pretty natural. They used to just run a little bit of maybe a pencil through the brows and called it a day. Also, their brows were more on the thinner end. We absolutely were not going to thin out Sheree's brows for the purpose of this video. Um, but just know that in the 1940s, the brows would have been a little bit more on the thinner side. So I mentioned this book is a mystery. When you, this book drops you right into the middle of things, into the middle of the 19, 1940 London and right into the middle of the story. Because there's, I think it's the prologue. In the prologue, you see a girl get murdered. And this is significant because she is one of Mr. Churchill's secretaries. And now there is a vacancy at number 10 Downing Street for the typist pool working directly with the Prime Minister. Well, they were so quick to put up her <laughs> position. Exactly. So the things that pop up immediately in the first few chapters um, is authentically awful 1940s prejudices and the IRA and fascists and the need to fill this vacancy in Mr. Churchill's secretarial pool. Bottom line, Maggie has a friend who works with the private secretaries down in that general area. And he calls Maggie and says, hi, there's an opening in Mr. Churchill's secretary pool. Would you be interested? And she says, honestly, I've, Paige is better suited for this. She's worked with an ambassador. Paige is one of Maggie's housemates. And they said, well, unfortunately, Paige is American and there's a war on and we need a Commonwealth citizen. So Maggie, although she grew up in America, is British and does go to join the secretarial pool and do her bit for the war effort, despite being very overqualified and a bit salty about not being considered to do the more advanced private secretary work that only men get to do. Ah. So Maggie has several housemates to cover the cost on this house that hasn't been able to sell for a couple of years. That should be familiar to <laughs> many of us who may have uh, dealt with housing markets in the last few years here. Maggie, finally, who has been in the, United, in the UK for a couple of years now, finally says, oh man, you know, I should probably go visit my parents' graves. I hadn't done it yet. I was gonna just, you know, come to the UK or Great Britain and sell my grandmother's house and go home. That hasn't worked out. I've been here a long time. I'm probably gonna stay. I should go and pay my respects to my parents' graves and, you know, say goodbye. So Maggie does go to the cemetery and there she finds her mother's grave and only her mother's grave. Ah. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. There's one element of mystery for you. The other mystery is that, well, there's a war on. There have been a couple of bombings, by which I mean parcel bombs and IRA connection. You get to see the bad guys and not just the good guys in this book. So it's, it's multiple perspectives, but it's third person, not first person. So if first person narration bugs you, especially when it switches viewpoints, this is a good bet. Throughout this, there's the shadow of a plot. There's a reference to sleeper agents, German sleeper agents. Maggie, remember, who is very, very good at math, thinks at one point that she sees something that could be a German cipher and is, of course, blown off by all the men because she's a girl. What would she know right. about dots and dashes that might be dots and dashes 
in an advertisement for women's fashion. This book takes you into the 1940s and all around London. You get to see how people got around public transportation. You get to see Maggie and her friends try to go out to a pub. So would you say that um, the book is historically accurate? Yes and no. Okay. What I didn't know when I started this book is that it's based on the memoirs of one of Mr. Churchill's actual typists. Ah. And many of, a, of the references in the back of the book, this is a fiction novel with lots of references at the back of the book for people who are curious about more factual information. Interesting. Uh, state that this secretary and the author were supposed to meet up at a dedication, but bottom line, it didn't happen and the secretary did pass away. Oh. This was in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. But the secretary did make a point of telling the author, there is no way anyone working for Mr. Churchill would have had the time <laughs> that Maggie and her friends have to go off and get involved in the hijinks they get involved in, mm -hmm. in, in actual wartime. So there is fiction in that Maggie wouldn't have had all this free time to run around. Interesting. Going out and getting in trouble. I know we normally get a little crazy with the lashes, but that is so not 1940s. We're going to stick with natural, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's give these um, lash applications a go. These are magnetic lashes, by the way, so um, application is a little bit different because instead of eyelash glue, they'll actually, actually attach um, with a bunch of little magnets. And I do like that these lashes kind of give that like pulled out and up effect because that is actually very 1940s. Always very lifted and pretty. I loved that there were many 1940s feelings in this book. Um, the way the author describes things, you can sort of picture a little bit of life during the 1940s. I didn't always love what I saw of that life, <laughs> but I loved that you could see it. For instance, the history was there. The history was there. They talked about um, there was water conservation because there was a war on, so people didn't get to bathe as much as they might like to. Oh. They were encouraged to use some powder type product and bathe alternate days or something like that. Maggie's housemates were really interesting. One of them, Sarah, was a ballerina. And um, I, it seems that being a ballerina, being a, a ballet dancer during wartime, <laughs> It was a challenging thing to do um, because there were blackouts every night. Um, they talked about the blackouts. They talked about life in London, the fear that bombings would come and hit civilian targets as well. And by bombings, this time I mean air raid bombings from Germany. So um, the author, have you read anything else from the author? Have you actually read the whole series? I have not read the whole series, but um, I'm sure that I would enjoy the different adventures. Okay. She does have more books than just the Maggie Hope ones. This is her longest standing series, and I think this might have even been her first book, but um, the author does have another newer book coming out that I don't think is directly related to Maggie Hope. It's more set in California. Um, and if I had been a good librarian, I would have looked up what that title was <laughs> before I came in here, but uh, bad librarian, no cookies. I can talk with my getting my lips done. I've gotten quite good at it. <laughs> okay, well, if I get to do this, I can talk. Mm -hmm. They talk about um, what Maggie and her friends were wearing during this book a little bit. They talk about, there's references to people putting on their gloves. There's references to people pinning their hats. Ah. Mm hmm And also, um, you can tell our viewers a little bit about your hair. You did it <laughs> for um, this filming so that it can match with the look. Yes, I was uh, shooting for 40s adjacent hair today. Um, in the 40s, I don't have 1940s historically accurate rollers, but it was common for people to roll their hair um, whether it was with foam rollers, stiff rollers, getting a hair set. Um, so I went with sponge rollers because they are cheap. <laughs> it's red and we, we did some red, but with a little bit of shimmer so that the lips have um, a little bit of that kind of hydrated look and not too, too matte. But I think that 
this would conclude our very natural 1940s glam. Um, and I think it suits you very well, especially with your 1940s themed outfit and hair. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and I think it suits you very well with your 1940s themed outfit and hair. And um, we just wanna thank you for coming and talking about Mr. Churchill's secretary. This is available to check out at our library. So if you're interested in some kind of mystery, historical fiction um, based on some wartime, then I think that you should definitely pick this up on your next library visit. And once again, Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.